Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Pembina Institute's presentation on Canada's clean fuel regulations, uh, where we describe how fleet operators can monetize the regulation to uh, fund low carbon fuel infrastructure projects. My name is Saeed Qadura. I'm a manager of the electricity team at the Pembina Institute. So what is the clean fuel regulations or the CFR? There are regulations published by Environment Canada under the authority of the Canadian Environmental Protection Act. It is an industrial policy tool designed to cost effectively reduce greenhouse gas emissions from transportation fuels by reducing their life cycle carbon intensity. Now, life cycle carbon intensity is a measure of all the greenhouse gas emissions released throughout the life of a fuel from production and use, including extraction, processing, transport, and combustion. Technically, only plant Primary fuel suppliers are regulated by the CFR, and it is mandatory for them to maintain, maintain compliance with the carbon intensity standards. Like other cap and trade policies, companies that perform better than the CFR carbon intensity limit for the year generate credits that may be sold to non-compliant companies. Fleet operators and organizations that supply fuels are actually not regulated by the CFR, but can voluntarily register under the regulation as an opt-in party if they are performing credit generating activities. Through the CFR, voluntary participants can earn credits for supplying low carbon fuels or using lower carbon energy carriers like hydrogen and electricity. They can sell their credits to regulated fuel suppliers to help them offset the cost of reducing the carbon intensity of their products. And then volunteer participants can use their revenues to improve the business case for their decarbonization activities. In both cases, credits can be banked for use or sale in later years and they do not expire. The CFR establishes three credit generating actions known as compliance categories. Regulated companies will be able to generate credits under compliance category one. And opt-in parties, including fleet operators, utilities, fuel suppliers, would be eligible to earn credits under compliance category three. And there are three types of uh, compliance, uh, compliance activities or credit generating activities under compliance category three that opt-in parties can use to generate credits. Charging network operators specifically are required to reinvest credit revenues within two years after the end of the compliance period in which credits were sold. Revenues then must be reinvested uh, either in expanding the network of EV chargers or reducing the cost of EV ownership, for example, by offering financial incentives or rebates. The point is that if charging is done by the public, then the benefits should be returned to the public. On the other hand, site hosts have the flexibility in how they use the revenue earned from credits. They could reinvest credit revenue in vehicles and equipment to make projects more financially feasible. So what's the process for earning credits? The first step is to opt into the regulations as a voluntary credit creator using one of the three compliance category three activities. Then if you haven't already done so, purchase alternative fuel vehicles and install alternative fuel supply equipment. Then you operate your vehicles. This is self-explanatory, but you remember that compliance category three companies will generate credits based on the energy volumes dispensed, not the number of vehicles operated. Then you make sure to have a mechanism to monitor the volume supplied for each compliance period. After which you can calculate the number of credits generated using the methodology described in the CFR and generate a credit creation, revenue and credit balance reports, along with verification reports if necessary. On the annual credit creation report, once it's received, uh, and processed by Environment Canada, companies will receive their credits through the CFR tracking system, uh, which is an online tracking system. Then you can use your credits either by selling them or saving them for use at a later date. Remember that charging network operators have to reinvest their revenues within two years. And then you can repeat the process from the beginning, develop new credit generating activities and repeat this process from step two. Opt-in parties are required to submit three types of mandatory reports. All parties need to submit an annual credit creation report on January 31st for the previous compliance year. This is part of the process for receiving credits in the tracking system. Charging network operators are required to submit a credit revenue report 
if they sold any credits in the previous year. Finally, a credit balance report is required to identify how many credits are retained in the tracking system. Verification reports are required for credit generation uh, and credit revenue reports to confirm that information provided is accurate and follows the requirements of the CFR. Companies using unique fuels not previously defined in the regulation would need to submit a carbon intensity pathway report, which sums up the greenhouse gases emitted by that unique fuel through its life cycle. When doing your calculations to, to, to estimate how many credits you're going to be generating, the organizational parameters that you need to know are your compliance category three activity defined by your business model, the size of your fleet, their location where fueling is happening, the alternative fuel type, and accurate measurements of the energy supplied. The regulation also defines parameters that are independent of your organizational parameters and impact your credit calculation. They are defined in the regulation supporting materials based on technology and alternative fuel types. If you're looking for more details, you can find the clean fuel regulations in the Canada Gazette Part 1, Volume 154. And we'd like to thank you for tuning in to our presentation. Thank you.